So, here goes my Indonesian trip. Let me just draw this blind. Um, I think it was fantastic. I was there for two weeks. Um, I spent the last three days in Hong Kong. Um, the two weeks in Indonesia consisted of, the first week was mainly in Java, Javanese areas, and Balinese, and, and Bali was the second week. Um, I wanted to see as many different things as I could, um, and I don't know my way around, so I had a guide in the first week, which was excellent, 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 because I was able, she was very culturally, she knew a lot about her own country and the history and the culture. She was Muslim. Um, she knew a lot about Islamic history in Indonesia and also a lot about Hindu history, a, a lot, and Buddhism as well. She knew a lot and she knew where to go and she would take me to these places. Um, and it was fantastic because the moment we met and um, at the airport, I thought this is my chance to really just get into the language. Um, I mean, I was using the language f the minute I got on the plane from Melbourne on, uh, to Denpasar. I was, I said, no, nah, I've got to use it, and I did. And once I did that, it, it was it's a confidence thing because I've never used it, so it got easier. And we met, and then I just started to speak, and she says, "Wow, well, you know, you can speak Indonesian." I, I, I'm sure most people she takes around don't take an interest doesn't don't take an interest in the language. Um, so that was great. Um, and I was able to introduce myself and say, yeah, quite a few things clearly and coher coherently, I think, considering it was the first time I, uh, did it, but you know, there's a lot of issues with my language still. Um, I've got a long way to go, but I did improve. I think I did. And she would guide me around every day for a week. It was great. And you know, on the way to places in the car, she would speak to me in Indonesian. She would slow it down for me because she knew I was learning. Um, and that's another great thing. She didn't get impatient. She didn't uh, just switch to English all the time. I mean, she would to explain something, but generally she'd still keep speaking in Indonesian and just slow it down a little bit and explain some words that I didn't know and things like that. But she kept speaking and she kept wanting me to speak. She kept encouraging it. And I thought that was great. I needed someone to force me to do that because, well, you don't have to force me because I, I would gladly go out and, and use my language anyway. And that's what I did. Um, so that was good. That was intense. And she would talk to me. She was easy to understand. But she would, and I would talk to the driver as well. Um, but she would take me to places, you know, restaurants and galleries and whatever, cultural, uh, to temples and stuff and explain things. And I would meet other people there and Sometimes they were very, I found them very difficult to understand because they spoke very quickly and there was a lot of vocabulary that I didn't know. However, when they spoke slower, I, I was able to understand more. And I think that they, when they know, they're quite happy to help you. There was another thing about the people, they're quite friendly, they're quite, you show an interest in their language and they'll go out of their way to slow it down and help you and, and keep speaking because they know you want them to keep speaking, and they do. Um, sometimes they mix the language, a bit of English, to explain complicated, more complicated things about history and stuff that I wouldn't understand. So that was great. A lot of the guides we had, the other guides that they, guides we had, were great too. They did the same thing. Excuse me one second. Um, sorry. And she told them to speak to me in Indonesian, and they did. Um, it was really quite very rewarding and I think I did my comprehension did improve at first it was so hard to understand people they would say something oh, no, no, just sound like a blur then it, it got easier um, I was able to have conversations with less difficulty towards the end of the trip but every opportunity that I had there every opportunity that I had I took it whether it was a small you know just hello goodbye or something much more because in fact, when you travel, it's hard to have proper conversations, you know, beyond the hello, how are you, I'm, where are you from? But here, people will ask you questions when you speak the language. Now, they'll be very curious, they'll be very surprised. And they'll ask you questions and, and you can 
easily get into an hour or two hour or three hour conversation as I did many times uh, which was fantastic and they like a, they were my personal teacher you know they would help me they knew I was learning and they'd teach me things and say but you're very good and I told them that I, I've been learning without a teacher and I like to learn languages and all that sort of thing and they're like oh learning without a teacher how do you do that um, but a lot of people think that it's easier to learn with a teacher I think it's harder to learn with a teacher um, but they were very impressed, they were surprised, and it was easy to have conversations, long conversations with people that wasn't, uh, wasn't hard to find people to practice with. Um, it's a very outgoing culture in a professional way and in a, they watch your business and the way that they sell, and also the way their culture is very warm and open, they want to talk to strangers and, uh, and ask them all kinds of questions. And if you know the language, it's a hundred times, it's a hundred times better. I didn't see anybody else doing what I was doing. <laughs> uh, there were a lot of Australian tourists, as there are. There were other tourists from Russia, from France, I don't know, Holland, Italy as well. Um, I was, in Bali, I was mainly surrounded by Australian tourists. And you know, it's, I know I'm, you know, whipping a dead horse here, but it's the same thing. I don't see anybody making any effort or attempt to learn even the most basic things in the language. I, I just don't, I never see it. Um, and I can't understand why. It's, uh, you're going to a, a new country, yeah, sure, they'll speak English, they do, but it's respectful to learn some phrases and things like that. Um, and they'll quickly turn around and say, oh, yeah, but we don't need to do that, we speak, they speak English. Yeah, but it's not very, it's not a good reflection of their mentality. They're not very open-minded. And I saw so many people doing this. And no one, and they even talk to them as if they were talking to another native Australian speaker. I mean, it, slow it down a bit, you know. Um, don't it, because it's not their first language. Uh, I saw this happen a lot, and I sort of a bit disappointed, you know. Um, it's not a hard language to pick up, at least the basics. It's not hard. To, it's not hard to pronounce. Um, I'm not talking about being proficient. That's a different story, but. Learning the basics in Indonesian is definitely not difficult. And it's very rewarding if you do it. It's very rewarding. Um, you know, you can introduce yourself, you can say good morning, you can say how are you, blah, blah, blah. Where are you going? I'm going here. I'm married or whatever. You can talk a little bit about yourself. Um, basic things. Not. I'm not talking about high levels of fluency here. I'm talking about basic words and phrases. Um, and I never hear anybody, anybody um, doing that. So I kind of felt like I was was odd, but but very good too. It was a good feeling that I was I was I was doing what other people wouldn't do. And people may you know look at you strangely or hear something that's strange, you know. But I think they're the strange ones. <laughs> they think I'm strange, but I think they're a bit weird. But uh, that's my opinion. Um, yeah, that's my way of looking at it. Um, since so many people go to Indonesia for a holiday, I think it would make your holiday your holiday is good, but it make it a lot better if you were to learn some of the language. I know for me that I can't personally go to a country if I don't know anything about the language, even if they do speak English there. I don't feel comfortable. I don't feel. I feel a little bit alienated. I. If I haven't learned some of the language before I go, if I haven't spent three months or six months or whatever before, prior to my holiday, then I and I haven't made any effort. I feel quite yeah. I'm not as eager to participate in that society. I'm not as eager to do things. I'm less motivated, but I'm extremely motivated if I have some language behind me, even if it is bad, <laughs> even if my level is not very good. But if I can have some sorts of some sort of conversation, then and that's a good start when you go to the country. I mean, you you can improve while you're there. Um, I was only there for two weeks. I mean, it's not a huge amount of time. I should have stayed longer. Um, but I think my language was improving. I was learning vocab. It was so much easier to learn vocab because it was it was there. If someone would teach it to me, my guide would teach me or whatever. I'd see it. Then you know, a few minutes later or a day later, I. I guaranteed I'd hear it, or someone would say it, or I'd see it somewhere. So it's it's not something you're studying; it's something that you're living and breathing. 
Um, so I think it helps to do the hard work before you go, do some hard work, and then when you get there, um, you need to, uh, yes, you need to work at it when you're there. It's best to go with something. If you go with nothing, it's going to be harder because you won't have, you won't have any of the language at all. It'll be very difficult to get someone to talk to you in that language that you can't really say anything anyway because they'll just switch to English. But if you show that you can have some sort of a conversation, a little bit even, then they will they'll speak to you in that language. So you want to do a bit of hard work before you go. Um, the hard work definitely helps. However, however, I think that the way we learn languages, we learn them through books and in a very we learn very formal sort of language. Especially in Indonesia, I mean, there's a lot of variation. Um, so you really have to. Yeah, do your work, but when you go, you be prepared that you're not going to understand what people are saying. You may not understand people. And that's okay, because you're not used to the way native speakers really talk. They may say things that you're not used to hearing. Oh, what was that? Either you don't have the words. The reason why we don't understand is either because we don't have the vocab, or because we're not used to the way the native speaker is articulating that. They may be saying it really quickly. They may be putting words together because that's the way that they say it. But in a book, it doesn't teach you that. Even in in, in good um, good courses, they don't teach you that so much. You have to just get used to the way native speakers talk. Um, I think that's another really important thing, um, adjusting to it. So it's good to get over the country when you can to get used to, to hear real language. Because otherwise, you'll be... Yeah... You'll know words and phrases. And you may know a lot. You may even be able to read and write quite well. But um, like in my case, I can write and I can read a little bit. A little bit. My vocab's not the best. Um, but I'm not quite confident with writing. Uh, but I'm not confident with understandings, comprehension. And that's the area, the most important area. And the area that I want to improve in. And I think I did in those two weeks. I did. By the end of it, I was having conversations with less interruptions and less pausing and stopping and asking to explain things. However, that still did happen. Um, I still find it difficult to understand people over the phone. I find old people, older people, very difficult to understand. It sounds like a big blur. Um, that's not a criticism of them. I, it's just, I just can't, I'm not adjusted to it. Either because they're speaking really fast, the way that they're speaking, or they're speaking in a mixture of Indonesian and a local language like Javanese or something, or Balinese. Um, I'm not quite sure. I have difficulty understanding them. Young people I understand quite well if they don't go, if they don't race. Um, yeah. It's a great experience. Um, I succeeded. I failed. I went through with my language. I failed. I, part, I, you know, I had many successes where I communicated. I had other things. Other situations where I was put on the spot and I struggled. But it was good. I, I said to myself, I'm only here for a short period of time. I have to put myself through the pain barrier. And if I don't understand something or if I say something wrong or whatever, it, I, I just have to accept it. You know, if, if there's a misunderstanding, I don't get what people are saying, that's okay. I'm, I'm not experienced yet. It's all part of it. And those things, I think, help me. And they're not, they don't tend to get impatient with you, so if you say you don't understand something, um, if you say you don't understand something, they will, they might explain it in English or they might explain it in another way in Indonesian, so that's good that they, that they have to help you. Um, yeah, that's another thing. I think people, when they're learning language, are afraid to speak up and say, I didn't quite get that. I didn't understand that. You have to do it. It is annoying though in some cultures because they might just reply, start speaking to it in English and and whatever. But yeah, but you have to go through those embarrassing moments, I think. And they're not so bad. It's not, no one makes fun of you. It's just, there's a misunderstanding or something and you can just laugh it off. Um, but I made a lot of friends and and they all spoke to me. They were willing to speak to me in a language um, and help me. 
with it. Even complete strangers, complete strangers were willing to help me. So that's good. I may make another video about this, talking a bit more in detail of where I went and what I did, and I will speak some Indonesian as well.